Hi, I'm Rob B with Rob D, and recently we interviewed Robert Kiyosaki, famous for writing Rich Dad Poor Dad. Now, in that interview, he had some very big, bold views, and we felt we need to react to them. Yeah, some of what he said we were nodding along to, couldn't have agreed more. Other stuff, not so sure. Make up your own mind. So, Rob, thank you for coming on the show. Great to have you. Rich Dad Poor Dad was written over 20 years ago now, and a lot in the world has changed since then. But one of the things that I find incredible about the book is how timeless it's been. It could have been written at any point in time over the last 20 years. But is there anything from the book that you've changed your mind on since you wrote it? Because a lot has changed in the world, and a lot of the principles still apply today. But is there anything that you now think differently on? Well, well, not to be uh, egotistical, but I wrote the book for today. I was 25 years ago. And it was kind of tough back then because I was talking about a bad time coming or a change coming when everything was great. So that's 25 years ago. America was booming. The world was booming. But today, the, the, this goes what, you know, rich dad poor is what the rich t-shirt cares about what the, and the poor middle class do not. So today we have the biggest gap between rich and poor. I mean, it's massive. I mean, tonight we're going to have rioting down the streets for me in Phoenix. I'm living in Phoenix right now. There's going to be a rioting in the streets. And it's all the people, the poor people who are being screwed, being left behind. And the reason for that is that the rich know something about money that the poor and middle class are never taught in schools. Like poor dad was a very smart man, very good man, but he was poor as a church mouse. Yeah, he knew nothing about money. And he's teaching our kids, go to school, get a job, save money, you know, get out of debt, buy a house and invest in the stock market. I don't do any of that. I wish that it was my best friend's father when I was nine years old. So you follow that advice, you'll be poor. But that's what our kids are taught. And today the gap between rich and poor is so wide. And in 2020, the biggest crash in world history is coming right now. We're in the middle of it. So that's why we're having this event with Harry Dent and a bunch of other speakers is how do you prepare for it? Because it's either good news or bad news. And if you're prepared, it could be good news. So the lesson absolutely stands true today of like financial education. But what would you add to your book then? If you wouldn't take anything away, if you were going to rewrite it today, what would you be adding to it? I wouldn't rewrite anything. I hate to tell you that, but the fundamentals of why the rich get richer is the, are the same. I'm, I'm Japanese, fourth generation. I went to the fourth grade with a, with a bunch of rich white kids in Hawaii. All the, you know, so there was the plantation owners. And for some reason, I went to school with those kids. And then across the street from me were the kids, with the Asian kids like me and the Filipinos and the Portuguese who worked for the plantation. So right across the street from me was the laborers' kids, the plantation kids. And then the school I was at was where the white kids who owned the plantation lived. And I got to see both worlds of why the rich are rich and the poor and middle class are poor. And it starts with education, but also what's taught in our homes. So today, and I hate to say this, but the gap between rich and poor is so wide, it's dangerous. So with the book, people have implemented the strategies from the book and some people have been, I'm sure, very, very successful. I know lots of people personally who've read the book and done very well. But there'll be other people who read the book and still make the same mistakes and don't seem to get anywhere. What do you see as the biggest failing people make when they try and implement your strategies? Like, what are people doing wrong? What's the difference between those who get it right and go on to success and those who don't? Well, it, it goes back to education again. It's the way I learned about money from my rich dad was my best friend's father. Again, I'm nine years old. And he taught us about money playing Monopoly. You know, four greenhouses, one red hotel. And today I own hotels, I own thousands of houses and all this. The difference is with a game, you have to do something. It's physical learning. So there's mental, there's mental intelligence, physical intelligence, emotional intelligence and spiritual intelligence. So those are the four things that affect education. Our school system, it's mental and then emotionally tell you don't make mistakes. So they teach you the fear of failing. Whereas my rich dad, so that was my poor dad, he says, don't make mistakes. If you make mistakes, it means you're stupid. But if you look at the most successful guys like Thomas Edison, Henry Ford, Steve Jobs and all that, they failed so many times 
And that's how they got rich. So I learned to fail. I learned to make mistakes playing Monopoly. And then I go out and do it in the real world. And I still make mistakes, but I don't think I'm stupid. But I meet so many highly educated academic types. If they make a mistake, they're ashamed of it. They think, oh, that means I'm stupid. That's really interesting. And, And that's the big, you know, like... Tiger Woods is the greatest, the greatest athlete of the modern times. You know, he went up to the peaks and down to the bottom and he came roaring back. And I've, I've seen him play golf. I mean, he couldn't play golf if he didn't make a few mistakes. He, you know, he, he made a few bad shots. He, he probably putted 10 million times. But our schools say, just memorize the answers to putt, but, but don't putt. Well, how are you going to, how are you going to learn the damn thing? So that's what's wrong with school teachers or academics or these elites. You know, they, they punish you for making mistakes. Worst of all, these PhDs, they look down upon you if you don't have a college degree. They think they're smart because they have a PhD, but they can't do anything. What's happening in the world right now? It's a crazy time. What's your take on it from a finance point of view? What do you think is happening and what do people need to do? We're going to a banking collapse right now. So the biggest news of all the last few weeks was that Warren Buffett, you know, one of rich, America's richest men, he dumped all of his banking shares. So he dumped Goldman Sachs, Wells Fargo, um, all those guys. And he started buying gold. So the question is, it's not gold, but why is Buffett dumping bank stocks? And why is he dumping airline stocks? That means we're going into a collapse globally. So, you know, just as, you know, just, and also this week, a company in America came out and announced they can, they have driverless trucks, lorries. So that means in America, all these long distance lorry drivers, they're out of work. That's 3 million people replaced. So technology replaces people. So what's happening is that the bankers, like PNB, Powerbus, HSBC, the bank, all those bankers are going to be unemployed also because technology is going to replace them. And so that's what's happening. And then our, our government keeps printing money to kind of cover up for the mess. So guys like me who have access to all this cheap money get richer and richer and richer. Whereas the guys that are protesting in the street, all they have are credit cards and payday loans and all that. They have the worst kind of credit. You know, they, they can't get good loans. But guys like me who understand the system, I borrow money and I can buy huge assets with it, you know. So that's the difference. It's education. If there is no banking system, though, what are assets worth? The value of an asset, if there is no financial system anymore, are they really worth anything anymore? Should we be building bunkers instead? Because it sounds a bit like Mad Max times from what you're describing, end of world stuff. <laughs> it's not what Buffett is saying. Warren, I don't know if you guys know who Warren Buffett is, but he's a pretty rich guy. And he dumped bank shares, but he bought Barrett gold. So he's buying gold. No, he's not buying the company. He's buying the gold that Barrett has. So gold, silver, and Bitcoin are the new money today not the dollar or the yen or the pound. So I, I've been saving gold and silver. I started saving silver in 1964 and gold in 1973. So I have millions. And so the whole thing crashes down on me. It's the, it's the dollar that's going to crash, not gold and silver or Bitcoin. And that's what it's. So I don't save. What I'm trying to say is I don't save the pound sterling. I don't pound. I don't save the euro. And I don't save the yen and the peso and all that stuff. I save gold, silver, and Bitcoin because they can't mess with that kind of currency, that money. So is that what you think other people should be doing as well, getting into gold and Bitcoin? Is there any other asset classes that you feel comfortable with at the moment? That's a great question, Bob, because you're going to hear all these experts. I mean, I'm considered one of the experts, and I'm, I'm just an ordinary guy who's been watching this rip off by the American banking system. Like I don't invest in stocks. Everybody else does. And what I am as an entrepreneur. And when I saw the iPhone come out, come out, I said, holy mackerel, that's the most powerful tool an entrepreneur could have. You know, today you could sit anywhere in the world and do business with an iPhone. But most people are looking for a job versus being an entrepreneur. So they're thinking like an employee, like my poor dad. 
and not like an entrepreneur like my rich dad. So I'm an entrepreneur. I don't have a job. I, I, I employ hundreds of people, but I don't want a job because if I have a job, I'll pay taxes. <laughs> I'm opposite of everybody else. I, I use debt because debt is cheap today, especially. And the more debt I use, the less tax I pay. So this hasn't happened yet. There are certainly, there is a lot happening in the world, but at the moment, the banking system hasn't collapsed. When do you think this is going to happen? It's happening. That's what I'm saying to you. It already happened. You know, I mean, HSBC is in serious trouble because China is in trouble. Hong Kong's in trouble. And the whole thing started back in 1971 when Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard. And then the world could just print as much money as they wanted to. So that's why I shifted the gold. I bought my first gold coin in 1972 in Hong Kong. And uh, I was I was a Marine Corps pilot flying in Vietnam, and I, I sailed into Hong Kong. It was illegal for Americans to own gold in '72. So when I got to Hong Kong, I bought a, a South African Krugerrand for about fifty bucks, and today that that Krugerrand is worth about two thousand. I still have it. It's in a vault in Switzerland, but I don't I don't keep it here. But the whole point here is that the rich think differently. At the moment, gold is increasing in value. But in the UK, property prices, real estate is going up in value at the moment as well. And the markets in America and the UK are increasing as well. Is it all asset classes are going to continue moving this way? Or do you think it's temporary for some and only gold in the long term will perform and Bitcoin? What's your view on that? Well, okay, let me just say, you know, it's not what Buffett says. because He doesn't tell the truth necessarily. It's what is he doing? He's dumping all of his banking shares. And he's buying gold and he's dumping airlines. So if you're sitting there going, okay, now what's happening? And what happened is the Federal Reserve Bank is printing so much money, they pump it into the stock market, they drop interest rates so low, so mom and pop, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Average, they're buying a they're buying a house, speculating, hoping the price of the real estate goes up, it's gonna crash. That's the problem. What will cause that crash? The banking is gonna collapse. Technology is gonna replace bankers. You know, just as, just as Amazon replaced retailers, technology is going to replace bankers. People would counter that by saying, well, in the past, before the Industrial Revolution, everyone was farmers. And then the Industrial Revolution came along and they said, right, machines will replace the farmers. But then farmers became factory workers. So is it that so jobs will be eliminated over time, but new jobs are coming in its place. Do you think that trend is no longer going to continue? Or do you think that will happen and bankers will become techies and, and other type of jobs and, and work in the, the digital world instead? Or do you feel that actually for the first time in history, it's going to go backwards and there's going to be a vacuum of these roles and jobs in the future? Well, I, I kind of leave that to everybody else to decide because that's that's what the uh, global crisis thing is. You know, some people say I'm full of, you know what? I think to, I'll just say this much technology replaces people. Just yesterday, they announced, or two days ago, they announced that the, a driverless truck will hit the roads in 2021. So that means 3 million lorry drivers are out of work. And then Zoom will replace school teachers because why, why do you have to go to school when you got YouTube and you got Zoom? So uh, unemployment is going to go through the roof. So all the high paying jobs, the other people that are going to lose their jobs are many medical doctors because much of medicine is just you know, analyzing data. So today, like you know, radiologists, you don't need a radiologist, you need a computer. It can do a better job faster and cheaper. So there's, it's the change is here. I think the trouble is people can't see it because change is invisible today. You know, back in the agrarian age, you had a horse, but then industrial age, you had a tractor. You could see the tractor. Today, you can't see the tractor. That's the problem. Robert, besides following what you're doing and your actions. If someone's brand new to this, and there will be people listening who are brand new and are trying to make decisions, what action should they be taking? What should they do? Again, it's not what I'm saying, it's what am I doing? And what I've been doing for years is saving gold and silver because gold and silver are God's money. I'm not religious, I'm just saying it. God put the money here. It's been on planet Earth since the Earth was formed. And then Bitcoin is people's money. And Bitcoin is counter to the U.S. dollar. It's the exact opposite. So as I always say, all coins have three sides, you know, heads, tails, and the edge. 
And the edge is where intelligence is from. And the question is, what are you going to do? So Harry's going to say that gold, silver, and Bitcoin are pieces of crap. And he loves the U.S. Treasury. I don't trust the, I don't, you know, nothing wrong with the Treasury. I just don't trust my government. So he trusts them. I don't. So you make up your own mind is what I'm trying to say. So that's why you want to listen. And the best news is, is like, you know, the iPhone today can connect to the world. It can be an entrepreneur really quickly. The other thing is that there's more opportunity there than before, but it's not as an employee. The real opportunity is as an entrepreneur. And that's what I was, my rich dad said, be an entrepreneur. My poor dad said, be an employee. And my poor dad was so um, uh, upset when I, when I came back from Vietnam where I flew. And I got hired by United Airlines. And he says, why don't you fly for United Airlines? And my rich dad said, because you'll be an employee. And I had to make a decision. The road fork between rich dad and poor dad. If that makes any sense to you, that's where most people are at today. They're at the fork of the road. It seems that you're very bullish on gold and cryptos. Do you think this will become more of a mainstream investment for everyone? No, I, I, I would just say if, Warren Buffett last week when it disclosed that when he sold his banking shares and he bought gold, that was kind of the turning point of the world. And most people didn't even notice it. My, a lot of my friends didn't notice it. So it's not what Buffett says, it's what is he doing. And that's what people watch out for. If he's dumping banking shares, then banks are out of business. He's, he's quite, I mean, quite smart. I think that's the understatement of, this, of the century. But what's smart about his move is he bought a mining company, didn't he? So he'll still get his dividend as well as it, tracking the value of gold as well. So he gets best of both worlds. He still gets his stocks, but the stocks are obviously aligned to the performance of gold. So I think that's it was quite a, a clever play, but I don't think we should expect anything less from the man. Well, you know, Buffett only buys companies that, that he likes the product they sell, if you know what I mean? So he, he owns Coca-Cola and they sell Coca-Cola. And he owns this company called Geico and they sell insurance. And he owns Gillette, which sells razor blades. And so what does um, Barracks sell? Gold. And that should tell you something because his cost, his cost of goods is about $1,000 an ounce. And today gold is about $2,000 an ounce. And if it goes to $5,000 an ounce, he makes even more money. So it's not so much gold, but what's he selling, you know? So gold gold and silver, another razor blade. He lost a lot of money in silver because he was speculating on it. I don't speculate. I just, I buy and hold. I never sell. It's like real estate. I don't sell it. I hold it. That's why I don't need money. Every every month I have 8,000 rental units and 8,000 people send me a check every month. That's the difference. The gap between rich and poor is so wide today, it's dangerous. That's what I'm afraid of. I saw it coming years and years ago. That's why I wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and I created the cash flow board game. It's because we need financial education. You go to school, you're going to learn nothing about money, nothing. In fact, they'll teach you everything I would never do, like job security, save money, and invest in the stock market, get out of debt. I do exactly the opposite. I get into debt. I pay no taxes. I don't have a job. So that's the difference. You can make your choice. One's rich, one's poor. Yeah, I completely agree on the the wealth divide, and it does seem to be increasing. And something will happen if it doesn't get sorted. The people will sort it, as you know. And that's why you've got the riots in locals where you are, and I'm sure it'll happen in other places eventually as well. Yeah, well, it's happening globally right now. It's collapsing all. Over. Look at Japan. You know, that poor country. That I was just there for the rugby World Cup. The banks will loan a person money. So the person can pay back the money they owe at the bank. That, that's how screwed up it is. And that's happening in America too. They, they're so afraid it's going to collapse. So that's why Buffett dumped the banks. And I'm saying to you, it's not just not the banks only. It's technology is going to replace banks just as Amazon's replacing retailers. And so for the young guys, it's really, it's really good news. For old guys like me, bad news. We don't have time to recover. Well, I'm sure your your eight thousand rental properties will help you through. It's uh, the people at your your age who don't have the assets who might struggle if this all plays out. That's the attitude because when the crash comes, that's the best time to get rich. You know, a crash is any market having a discount. <laughs> that, that's like Amazon having a discount. Everybody runs in, you know. <laughs> 
So that's all a crash is, but you got to know what, what you're buying. So there you go. Absolutely loads in that interview. And we'd love to know what you think. So let us know in the comments what you took away from that conversation. And of course, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any more videos like this one.